Estes Rockets is putting real science and real rocketry in the hands of you, the public. Um, and you can go build these things, go get them at a hobby store and shoot them off. They're solid fuel rockets. They work just like a real one. There's real fire and they go super high. Um, so those rockets have been built for over 60 years by the Estes Rocket Company. They are the legacy leaders in model rocketry. And again, they put real science, real rockets in your hands. And we're going to hear from them today, right now. So take it away from this fantastic video from Estes Rockets. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Rocket Fever 2020. My name's Nicole and I am the Education Director here at Estes Industries. I just want to start off by saying thank you to the Columbia Memorial Space Center for putting on this incredible virtual event, getting amazing speakers all together, and being able to share our, all of our love for rocketry despite many of the challenges that, th that this year has brought for all of us. So today I'm here to bring rocketry education right into your home with an interactive presentation on how Estes model rockets work. So get ready to play along. Welcome to the Estes Rocket Lab. Here is where all of the magic happens. We have an, an incredibly talented team to bring new model rockets right to your home or even at school. Our kits range from simple rockets like this star hopper here, which snaps together in about 15 minutes, doesn't require any glue or cutting, to more complex rockets like our green eggs shown here, which is a lot more challenging of a build and takes a lot longer. We even have an entire product line dedicated to Destination Mars, and this Mars lander is a great example of some of the rockets we have in that product line. So again, we're gonna be talking about how Estes model rockets work. And I'm going to be using this rocket as an example. Many of you might have even built this rocket previously as part of the Rocket Fever event. And some of you might have even mailed this rocket back to the Space Center so that it can be launched here today. So this is an example of the rockets that we have and we're gonna be using this to play a game. I'm gonna be quizzing all of you to see how much knowledge you have on model rockets. So I'm gonna be going over three different parts of the rocket and when I point to these parts, I want you to either shout out your answer as loud as you can or maybe tell it to your parents, grandparents or whoever it, you are watching this video with. So give me a big thumbs up if you're ready to play along. The first part of the rocket that we are going to talk about today is located at the top of the rocket. And in this example, it's blue. So if you think that you know what this part of the rocket is, I want you to shout out that answer. And I'll give you five seconds to answer it. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the nose cone. So if you guessed the nose or the nose cone, you are correct. Nose cones come in many different shapes and sizes. Each nose cone is expertly crafted so that your rocket will soar up really high into the sky. The second part of the rocket that we are going to talk about today is located at the bottom of the rocket. So here in the example, it's this piece that's red and one white one. If you know what these are called, I again want you to shout out that answer super loud and I'll give you five more seconds to answer. Five, four, three, two, one. If you guessed the fins or the fin unit, you are correct. The fins provide stability for the rocket after it launches off of the launch pad. The fins make sure that your rocket doesn't wobble or it doesn't flip. So they're pretty important to make sure that your rocket can go as high as possible. You always wanna make sure your nose cone is pointed up right to the sky when your rocket launches as straight as possible. The third part of the rocket that we're gonna talk about today is actually located inside of the body tube. So I'm gonna use an additional rocket as an example. I've opened up this rocket and here, if you think that you know what this part of the rocket is called, Again, I want you to shout out your answer even louder than you did the last time. And you've got five, four, 
Three, two, one. If you guessed the parachute or the recovery system, you are correct. The recovery system is put inside the rocket to make sure that your rocket gently lands back down on the ground so that you can launch your rocket over and over and over again. This parachute is an example of a recovery system and many of our rockets have parachutes in them. But there are also different types of recovery systems. For example, the Starhopper that I showed before actually uses a streamer instead of a parachute as a recovery system. So those are the three parts of the model rocket that we're going to talk about today. Again, we said the nose cone, the fins, and the parachute. These are pretty important to consider because many components of model rockets are, simple, are similar to actual rockets that we see being launched by SpaceX, Blue Origin, NASA, and many other aerospace companies. For example, SpaceX recently launched their Falcon 9 with two astronauts to the International Space Station. Those astronauts were sitting inside the rocket's nose cone in their payload section, and that is again similar to the nose cone that we have here. In addition, after the astronauts completed their mission on the space station, they were launched back down to Earth and their capsule landed in the ocean. In order to ensure that they landed safely, there were four big parachutes connected to that capsule to ensure that the astronauts were safe and that they could return home to their families. So there are a lot of connections between model rockets and real rockets, and model rockets give you an opportunity to think like an engineer and imagine yourself being an astronaut, an engineer, or many other different opportunities in the aerospace world. So you might be wondering, how do the model rockets work? And that's a great question if you were thinking about that. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about how the model rockets actually work. After you've completed building your rocket, the next thing that you're going to need to do is insert the model rocket engine. So here is an example of an Estes engine. And the engine gets inserted right into the bottom component of the rocket. When you're inserting your engine, you want to make sure the clay nozzle that looks like this is always facing outside of the rocket down towards the ground. Once your engine is tightly secured in and your clay nozzle is like so, you are good to move on to the next step. The next thing you're going to do is take the model rocket starter and you're going to insert it into the clay nozzle like so. And then you're going to take a plug and you are going to put it into the clay nozzle to secure the starter in place. You always want to make sure that your starter is located in between two of the fins so it's easy to hook up onto the launch pad. Now your rocket is ready to be launched. Here is a launch pad. And again, as we note many of the similarities between model rockets and real rockets, real rockets are launched off of a launch pad as well. Now we are going to attach the rocket onto the launch pad by using the launch lug as a guide so that the rocket can nice and gently glide all the way down onto the launch pad. Then we are gonna attach the launch controller, which is this red box here, right onto the rocket itself. So each launch controller has a wire, and at the end there are two micro clips here. You are then going to attach the micro clips to the starter. You always wanna make sure that the micro clips are attached nice and tight and you always want to make sure that they're not touching each other so that they are securely, so that they don't disrupt the connectivity. And sometimes it can be a little challenging, so I'm just going to make sure that these get on nice and tight. There we go. Now you are ready to launch your rocket. It's really important that after you have your rocket attached to the launch controller that you and everyone in your group stands back at least 15 feet away from the launch pad. This just makes sure that everyone's being really safe. At that moment when your group is standing back,
you are gonna take the key that is attached to the launch controller and you are gonna insert it into the slot. At that moment, a red light should turn on indicating that everything is connected correctly. For our example here, there isn't any red light going on because I've actually removed the batteries from this launch controller. I'm inside a building and you never want to launch a model rocket inside of a building. After your key is inserted and there's a red light, you are ready to launch. At that moment, you want everyone to make sure that their eyes are on the rocket and you want everyone in your group to count down from five. Since I can't actually launch this rocket in here, we're going to show you a quick video about how a rocket launch actually looks. And it's that simple. But there are some of you that I know want to become model rocket experts and you might still be thinking, I still don't get how it works. So, we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper on how our engines work, and that will really help you to understand how your rocket actually lifts off into the air. After you hook up your model rocket to the launch pad and make sure everything's connected, you're ready to press your launch button. At that moment, the launch controller is gonna send an electrical signal through these wires, up through the micro clips, up through the starter, and they're gonna ignite the propellant that is inside the model rocket engine. At that moment, the propellant inside the model rocket engine is going to burn up, and this is going to produce a force called thrust. Thrust is that force that actually causes your model rocket to lift off the launch pad into the air. After all of the propellant is burned up inside of the engine, there is a time delay inside of the engine. This just allows your rocket to continue coasting off of its momentum so it can reach its peak altitude. Peak altitude is also known as apogee, and that's a really important term to remember. Once your rocket hits apogee, the ejection charge inside of the engine is going to pop open and it's going to eject your parachute out of the top of the rocket. And this will allow you again to make sure that your rocket is gently landing right back down on the earth so you can launch your rocket over and over and over again. So that is a little bit more about how our model rockets work. And we've talked a lot about model rockets today, so I'm quickly just going to recap on everything we've talked about. We learned about three different parts of the model rocket, the nose cone, the fins, and the parachute. After you safely hook up your model rocket onto a launch pad, your group stands 15 feet back, and you insert the key into the launch controller, you're ready to launch. So, once you launch and press that launch button, an electrical signal is going through all of these wires and traveling up into the engine to ignite the propellant that's located inside the engine. When that propellant is ignited and burns, it is producing a force called thrust. And thrust is what actually launches your rocket up into the air. Once all of the propellant is burned up, the time delay in the rocket allows for your rocket to coast up to apogee or the peak altitude. And finally, the ejection charge is going to eject the parachute, allowing your rocket to land right back down on the ground so you can launch over again. If you're interested in learning more about how model rockets work, or you feel that you are ready to build your first model rocket, or your fifth, or your 10th or your 100th model rocket, we have a special offer to give to you today. By using the code at the bottom of our screen, Rocket Fever 2020, you will get 10% off your entire purchase on our website. So feel free to use that code again, go onto our website and choose your favorite rocket kit and get 10% off your order. This offer does expire on August 20th, so you wanna get on our website as soon as possible. 
We do want to let everyone know that safety is our top priority. So I do highly, highly encourage everyone to check your local and state regulations surrounding the coronavirus and the ability to go out into a public place with a, with a small or a large group. Do make sure that you're practicing social distancing and being really safe. In addition, for locations like Southern Colorado, urban cities, urban settings, or any places that are closer to an airport, there may be further restrictions or regulations around where you can launch model rockets. So we do recommend going to the National Association of Rocketry's website, as you can see below here on the screen. And that website is gonna have all the information that you need to understand the regulations in your local area about launching. So we encourage everyone to get a kit and launch, build and launch as safely as possible. For any educators, teachers, superintendents, STEM coordinators that are out there listening, we understand that it has been a huge challenge for you to plan for this upcoming school year with all of the uncertainty around back to school. So we again want to continue to extend this offer to you as well by using the Rocket Fever 2020 10% off discount code so that you can purchase a classroom kit for your, for your classroom. And I do have an example right here to show you. We do sell many of our rocket kits in bulk, in packs of 12, so that you can provide really hands-on learning experiences for your students. So be sure again to check out Rocket Fever 2020 on our website when you're purchasing classroom kits for your students. In addition though, we do get that it's been virtually impossible to plan this year. So we're really excited to announce the launch of our new series of lesson plans written by teachers for teachers that include different options for virtual learning, hybrid learning, in-classroom learning, or any of the different types of learning that are gonna take place this year. All of our lesson plans do connect to the next generation science standards and offer real world hands-on experiences for your students. If you want to take learning to new heights and use one of our new lesson plans, do email us at educator at estes.com to join our waitlist and we'll be emailing that, that lesson plan to you in the coming weeks. Well, that is all I have for everyone here today. I hope that you enjoyed our presentation and learned a little bit more about Estes Rockets and how they work. I want to again just say thank you for your attention and participation and a big thank you to the Columbia Memorial Space Center for putting on this incredible event. Thanks everyone so much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the speakers, STEM events and rocket launches here today. I uh, want to thank Estes for that fantastic video talking about their rockets and how they were put together. Um, and thank you, Estes, just for being a great partner throughout all of our 10 years of Rocket Fever.